hello guys welcome back once again to my youtube channel and we are going to have one more important pyt topic discussion so today in this video we're going to talk about the stains which are useful in pathology so i have the uh, structure here which will be stain and also the stain here and also an image here so that if at all it's useful if an image based question comes we should be able to answer that as well right so let's without wasting any time let's deep dive it's going to be a very quick session our goal is to revise recall everything passively just listen to the video put on the headphones and answer the questions which you ask in the comment section fine so melanin uh, though we don't require a stain for melanin because melanin microscopy will be a brown color pigment and i'm sure that you know that melanin is in skin hair follicle or in conditions like nevus or melanoma not required but if a question comes on what's a stain useful for melanin it's mason fontana schmoral stain these are stains useful for melanin there are also amino histochemistries which are useful for melanin and melanocytes we have something called melan a right as the name says and hmb45 the way, there's a very easy way to remember hmb45 hmb stands for human melanin black that's a stain's name hmb45 and melanin are immunohistochemistries not normal stains right so how do i remember mass and fontana right, the students said in, today in the discussion in the morning tan right melanin tan so the way to remember mass and fontana if you can remember that otherwise if you're like me just you remember it by reading it again and again mass and fontana is a stain for melanin right and here you have a beautiful skin biopsy in the skin biopsy melanocytes are seen in the basal layer of epidermis i'll zoom them a little bit so this is my basal layer right so this is the place where melanocytes are seen so if you look at this this basal layer of epidermis alone is having a little bit of blackish in color right that's your classical melanin or mass and fontana stain how it looks in a biopsy fine perfect next hemocytin hemocytin is something which i'm sure everyone here knows right hemocytin is nothing but an iron iron will be stained by pearl stain or a pearl prussian blue stain the beauty of stains is it actually gives in most of the stains in the name itself what color they will turn to like oil red or sudan black pearl prussian blue alcyon blue right most of them pearl prussian blue stains iron mostly in the ferric form of iron that's the pathological deposit of iron and this will be the blue color here so how will they ask us in a question let's say i'm having a liver biopsy with lots of pearl prussian blue positivity i can think of an hemocytosis or a hemochromatosis right a lung biopsy with a elongated fiber which is pearl prussian blue positive in a patient working in a cement industry come into the below section what's your answer it's a classical occupational lung disease and you have a name structure below that right so these are all applications of these stains these are facts which can be easily turned to a scenario based question and they can ask you right let's go to lipid lipid in a normal microscopy will be clear see this also is a pyq why is it clear it's clear because it's been washed away during processing right so it'll be washed away it'll be emptied during processing of tissue which uses gradations of alcohol right alcohol generally wipes away liquid and stains use a marker you wipe them with alcohol it's lipid it's been removed of that sort right so actually again one more pyq so to demonstrate lipid you cannot demonstrate lipid in a normal formalin fixed tissue because it's been washed away during processing right so to demonstrate a li lipid or to see the stains i need a frozen section i can do them only in a frozen section i cannot do with them in a normal formalin fixed section this also came in an aims exam frozen section or a fresh tissue i can do an oil red or sudan black as you can see red color oil red or sudan black black color sudan black has multiple subtypes like 2 3 b everything most of the sudan blacks will definitely stain lipids so just remember sudan black and oil red the most important thing is they can be used and they can be seen only in a frozen section fine let's go to the next glycogen so glycogen in a microscopy it can be have two appearance it can be a pale pink appearance or a clear appearance based on the density when it's more dense more glycogen accumulation it becomes more clear subtle glycogen it has a pink to a paler pink in color fine glycogen can normally seen in liver biopsy muscle biopsy and in case of von gierke's disease excess accumulation becomes a little bit clear in case of seminoma cells again you have glycogen accumulation becomes a little bit clear right you can see them in a liver biopsy in case of von gierke's disease or a glycogenatory disorder muscle biopsy in case of hers disease everything right you can see them in a tumor in testis testis seminoma cells and ovary disjaminoma cells has glycogen in it right there's a classical finding okay and also you can see them in case of an you can see them in case of an uh, diabetes in case of an proximal conjugate tubule in pct in case of a diabetes cousin armani epstein lesion right all these are glycogen accumulation which has seen armani epstein lesion in diabetes testis seminoma and in liver or in glycogen steroid disorder glycogen is positive for pas the unfortunate thing is protein is also positive for pas so 
PAS gives a magenta color or a dark pink color. Like you can see in this image, it gives a dark pink color. So how do I differentiate or a pathologist differentiate? Okay, it's a PAS due to glycogen or a PAS due to protein. It's a very simple technique. We use an enzyme called as diastase. Do not memorize, do not keep any mnemonic here. Diastase is an enzyme which will be destroying saccharides. Diastase destroys saccharides or sugar destroying enzyme. So will it destroy glycogen? It will or it will digest glycogen, right? So glycogen is diastase sensitive. Protein is diastase resistant because obviously protein cannot be digested by a sugar destroying enzyme it is diastase resistant fine there's one more thing which is diastase resistant along with protein is a disease in your intestine the organism the triforma vipulae or the vipul's disease also has in the macrophages ph positive diastase resistant structures right so if it's resistant to digestion it's a protein it is sensitive to digestion it is glycogen right do remember them resistant and your sensitiveness fine perfect let's go to calcium Right? It's a very old mnemonic which has been running through generations. Like she looks too pretty, try to catch her, right? There are some things which are passed on from generation to generation. Calcium, K-A-L. K for Cosa, A-L for Alizarin. Cosa is the most common done stain. Alizarin is very expensive, but it's very, very specific stain. If I have to do a research, I'll do on an Alizarin red and not on a one Cosa. As the name says, red color, Alizarin red will be red in color, right? And here, the clear, right? blackish brown color will be the appearance of one cosa okay one cosa will have a blackish brown color thing and alizarin red will have red color alizarin red is definitely more specific but not commonly done because it's very very expensive right okay let's go to the next copper see copper there are multiple stains i have rhodonine i have robionic acid i have orsine as well right i've highlighted this because see there are two names rhodonine and rhodamine both of them are interchangeably used but for an exam point of view i say stick to rhodonine because rhodamine, you have one more thing which is positive for rhodamine, which is your mycobacterium tuberculosis or I mean rhodamine stain, right? Okay, rhodamine B is useful for mycobacterium, maybe M for mycobacterium. Remember that so that you won't have a confusion, right? But in real life, rhodamine and rhodamine are interchangeably used for copper. For an exam, yes, stick to rhodamine, right? And rubionic acid and one more stain in orsin. I am a personal favorite of orsin. Because orsin is an amazing stain which comes beautifully well in doing it, but not very commonly used. And copper also, we don't use it often, right? So there's a rhodonine biopsy. That's how it looks. Or brownish to orangish color uh, will be stained for copper. Copper is useful in one condition, which is Wilson's. In Wilson's disease, liver biopsy will be stained for copper. For undergraduate, this should be the one thing which you should never forget. You have the mutations in the copper transmitter. You have the KF ring. You have zinc, penicillamine, trientine as a way of treatment. And urine copper levels are the best way to pick up Wilson's disease. We have covered everything Wilson in this few seconds. Fine. And come to mucin. Mucin is unique. I have different types of mucin. I have like neutral mucin. I have like acidic mucin. I have like basic mucin. Right. Pass stains most of the mucin. Alchine blue stains is more specific for an acidic mucin. As you can see in this image, this is the magenta color of pass. If you go here, this is the blue color of alcyon blue, right? So here, I have both the stains here, alcyon blue and PAS, right? So PAS will be magenta in color, alcyon blue will be bluish in color. That's how it looks, fine? It's PAS, alcyon blue, both of them will stain. Acid mucin stain by alcyon blue came once in an INIC exam. Please do remember them, right? There's one more stain called music carmine. It's also a stain useful for mucin. As the name says, mucin, muci. Carmine is a red color. If you've seen gems packet, there'll be a carmine extract, right? That gives the red color, right? Muci carmine stains the mucin red color. That's how it is, right? Muci carmine are generally useful for salivary gland tumors. Salivary mucins are beautifully stained by muci carmine, right? You like a muco epidermoid carcinoma, it will be beautifully stained by muci carmine, right? And muci carmine is also positive for a microorganism. The cryptococcal shell will also be positive for muci carmine. Do not require, we'll just go for this. Salivary gland mucin, muci carmine will be beautifully staining that, right? Okay, the last but not least, let's come to amyloid. Amyloid has multiple stains. Amyloid, like, like, as they also we saw, we have thioflavinous, we have uh, PAS. We have Jimsa, we have Crystal Violet, right? There are lots and lots of stains for amyloid, but the best one is undoubtedly Congo Red. Microscopy, after Congo Red, normal lab microscopy, we have the salmon pink color or the orange and pink color. And polarized light, we have your 
apple green bioreferences. If you want to know why in polarized state there's an apple green bioreferences, go to the previous video of the PY to talk to your email addresses and there'll be a question there, right? So I am leaving you two questions here. Tell me the organism which will be staining on music armin and also one more thing, what is that? We did talk about okay. We did talk about a case where you have a lung biopsy and the patient has an uh, elongated fibers sustained with pulse pressure and blue working in a cement industry, right? See you soon. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel and also on the Instagram and the Telegram groups of mine. I'll put the link below. We'll be having quizzes on these topics and let's see if you can make something out till need be, right? See you soon. Till then, bye bye from Doctor Anjit. Bye bye.